Hi everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome back to Making the Cut. Making the Cut is my series here on the Simon Says Stamp channel where we talk about all things die cutting. And today we are going to be creating beautiful tone on tone floral birthday cards. We're going to start with the awesome mosaic tulips stencil. This is a layering stencil set and it is has three six by six stencils. We are starting with four and a quarter by five and a half inch panels of smooth white cardstock, and we're going to do a very light tone on tone inking. Yes, it's a layering set. Yes, you absolutely could use different colors of ink, but for this these cards in particular, I want the background to be very soft and remain in the background. So I am using a very light hand. In fact, a blending brush that maybe you've used previously that has, you know, just a little ink left on it is perfect. So for the first stencil, I did a very light then I'm using the same color of ink, in this case, lilac, positively saturated ink. I'm gonna use a much heavier hand to apply that ink color. Now you may notice I'm not going all the way to the outer edge of the four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel, and that is on purpose. I want it to remain kind of soft and imperfect. Finally, we'll take that last stencil and we're not going to really re-ink it and we're going to go very soft. This is definitely the stencil with the most surface area that we're inking, but we want it to be very, very light. I'm not going to take it all the way to the edge of the panel. And there is our beautiful tone on tone design. I think with the tone on tone, it is going to help the images remain in the background, but still provide awesome texture. Now, I didn't actually clean my stencils before moving to this next color because I didn't think it would affect it much. Now, when we go to the third panel, which is in yellows, we definitely wanna make sure our stencils are really good and clean. So we are not picking up some of these dark colors and dragging them into um, you know, the yellow. So I tapped off quite a bit of that ink for the first stencil. I am using Mist so that it was a lighter application. And then I'm doing a much darker application for the second stencil, just like I did before. I love how you can get different looks with each of these. What I really love is that you could even create an entire rainbow of cards if you wanted to using all of the amazing positively saturated inks from Simon Says Stamp because you would get an amazing assortment of cards. Thank thank you cards, or maybe you just need lots of birthday cards like I do. This could be a sympathy card, an anniversary card, a wedding card, a friendship card, literally anything that you need, this kind of design is going to work for. So now we're on to that third stencil. Again, I'm using whatever was left over. Oh, look how pretty that is. It almost looks like it's ghosted out a little bit. For the third stencil, I will say my stencil does have a little ink on it because I tried a different yellow first. I actually used the light yellow butter and I didn't love it as much. Honey is my jam. So we are actually gonna go in with honey and we're going to do our first, second and third layer just like we did before. And that is going to be the first layer of our backgrounds. Now, if you guys have followed me at all, you know that I love a layered background that is one layer, whether that's stenciling an ink splatter or stamping, stamping an ink splatter, multiple stamping, multiple stencils, any combination of that. That is what I really, really love. So we are going to take these backgrounds after we have them all ready to go, and we are going to do a very subtle second generation text stamping over the background. It's going to serve to kind of reinforce that this stenciled image is the background of our card, not the focal point, and it's really going to give a very fun pattern paper look to the design. So here's a look at the three backgrounds I've created so far. 
Any sort of text background is going to work for this. I grabbed one that I had handy. This is the My Favorite Things Romantic Script Background. You may have scripts, stamps, or text stamps from any of your favorite companies, including Simon Says Stamp. Anything really is going to work for this. So I am going to take my insert out of my Misty and place my background stamp and my panel into the Misty. I'm going to stamp up my image or ink up my image or background and stamp it off on a scrap piece of paper. And here I tested it to make sure I like the second generation. So I will stamp off the first generation on the scrap paper and then stamp the text over my actual background. Look at how beautiful that is. Now in between changing the color for each, you're going to want to clean your stamp really well since you're using, or I'm using, three different colors for the backgrounds. If you are mass producing all in your favorite color combo, you could definitely just keep on going. So again, you ink it up, stamp it off on a scrap piece of paper, and then use the second generation stamping over the background. It's going to give you a very faint and light text. Again, we're gonna go back with our mist. We're using the same color we used for our stenciling. Stamp that off with the first generation, remove our scrap paper, and stamp the second generation right over our background. Absolutely gorgeous backgrounds. Next, I have die cup die cut the fine floral stem this is a beautiful new die very detailed from simon says stamp i've die cut it three times from smooth white cardstock and we are going to be custom coloring these beauties to match each of our backgrounds this is also part of that tone on tone that i was talking about using cabbage and artichoke ink and a small blending brush i'm going to start inking up the stems some sort of a sticky mat, the stamp wheel, or any sticky mats that you have are going to be handy for helping hold your die cuts in place. Or you could even just use your glass mat to um, ink up your die cuts for easy cleanup. I'm putting down a layer of the cabbage ink first, and then we'll go in and blend out some artichoke. Just blending and blending. Give a nice base. If a little white shows through, that's totally fine. Then with the artichoke, I'm only gonna add that kind of more in a pouncing motion or maybe just a little blend here and there, not everywhere. That's gonna help give some depth and dimension to our floral stems. Then we are going to be inking up the florals for each of these in the same color that we used for everything else. This again is part of that tone on tone. I'm going to be adding the color in the center of the flower, mostly leaving it almost white out on the outer edge. So doing a circular motion in the middle and leaving it white. There's also three additional flower images. When you die cut this die, we are going to want those so that we can apply or layer, pardon, the flowers together. So this is going to be the mist color. I'll do the flowers here in a minute. And then finally, we'll use lilac for the remaining flowers. And again, just this small blending brush, also the small round blending brushes would work for this. I think that the smaller brushes work better than the larger ones in this case. We'll grab our flowers for each, and we're going to ink three up for the lilac, three for the mist, and three for the honey color. These will each be offset in the center of the flowers on the main die piece, giving it a much fuller flower. I'll pop all of these pieces out. One thing that I think is super handy with this die is it is all one piece, meaning it is very easy to just die cut everything you need with one pass of your die cutting machine. That includes your flower centers and even some little additional buds. I didn't use those. I used the three flowers and the three center pieces only. 
Now for the centerpieces, I will use the honey color for the mist and lilac flowers. For the yellow flowers though, I definitely don't, didn't wanna do yellow on yellow. I'm gonna grab my mocha ink and I will use the Mocha Positively Saturated ink for those flower centers. You can see once I add the color, the detail on these die cuts, it is so exquisite. I absolutely love it. We're gonna grab the rest of these out. Once I'm done inking up everything on the stamp wheel or any kind of sticky mat, I instantly want to clean it. Now you can see mine is well loved and it does have some staining, but I do try to clean it up really quickly with either um, some rubbing alcohol or a baby wipe, something like that. So we'll just place everything off to the side and then we're going to start putting everything together. I used a little rubbing alcohol and a dry rag to quickly and easily clean up my stamp wheel. Pulling our backgrounds back in, look how gorgeous this looks on the tone on tone. We're going to place that beautiful branch right in the center of the card. Most of the florals are concentrated in the upper half with the stem in the lower half of the card, this is going to be a great spot to add our sentiment. In fact, we can layer a couple of sentiments in this area very easily, and that is what I was looking for. It's all about balance. Using the glue press, I'm placing some thin lines of glue on the back of my floral and then sticking it down in the center of my background. You can see that I have offset my flowers, giving them, a bare, giving them a very full appearance, and then we're simply adding glue in the center and adding the flower centers. We're gonna just do each of these one by one. This was very easy to do when creating these assembly line style. So we'll start with the purple, we're gonna add on our flowers and the flower centers. I like to put just a little dab of glue in the center and then pop that bloom in place. And then we will go ahead and add the yellow flower centers. And finally, we will finish with our yellow background. For the sentiments today, I know I mentioned earlier in the video, you could make any kind of card with this design. I feel like this particular design is going to work with many themes and occasions. I decided to use birthday sentiments using the new Birthday Basics Stamps and Dies from Simon Says Stamp. I don't know about you guys, but I can always use more birthday sentiments. This is an amazing stamp and die set designed by uh, Kathy Zielski for Simon Says Stamp. And we are going to do tone on tone with these as well. There are dies that coordinate with the larger size greetings from this stamp set. You'll notice I'm stamping happy birthday with the lilac ink, and I'm going to blend in a little iris to give it more depth and dimension and almost an ombre effect. It is pretty subtle for this one. So I'm just adding a little bit of that color in and then I will use the iris color of ink to stamp the smaller phrase, it's your day. For the smaller phrases, there aren't coordinating dies in this particular set, but I am using my favorite, most used, trusty sentiment labels dies from Simon Says Stamp to die cut each of these small phrases for my card. And my misty door was a little wet and was not picking it up. Let's give it a quick dry. Oh, so much better. So we'll stamp that with the iris. I often love to stamp my sentiments in the same or similar color family as what I've used on my card. I feel like it just ties in beautifully and especially for this with these monochromatic tone on tone cards, it works especially well. Next for the honey background card, the yellow card, 
I am going to stamp you're a gift. Now, I did not stamp it the first time correctly, so I did cut that out of the video. You'll see it here on the screen. I got way too much brown into that yellow. So I'm going to stamp it again with the honey ink, and I'm going to use my small round blending brush to blend in just a tiny bit of mocha. And I like that a lot better. It's not quite so... It's not that straight line. It's a, a little bit nicer blend, if you will. For the rest of the sentiment, hope your day is awesome. I am stamping that with the mocha ink. For our third and final greeting, this one is happiest of birthdays, so glad you were born. For this one, we're stamping happiest of birthdays with the mist colored ink, and then so glad you were born with raindrop. For the three large sentiments, as I mentioned, there are coordinating dies for each of these. I'm going to go ahead and snip those apart, die cut those greetings, and then die cut each of the smaller phrases with my sentiment labels dies, and then we can attach these to our card with foam adhesive. I like the foam adhesive here. It lifts them up a little bit and really draws your eye into the whole thing. I'm going to use my favorite foam adhesive strips as well as some foam adhesive squares where they work. If it's something kind of narrow, most of the greetings I'm using today are kind of narrow, I love using the foam adhesive strips. They work fantastic. So you'll notice that I'm going to just place them on the back, peel it off. I think I used two strips for some of these bigger pieces and then layer them right over the stem of the flower. So as I mentioned um, earlier in the video, that bottom part of the card doesn't have the blooms or that much going on. So it's the perfect spot to place our sentiments. Once we have all of our sentiments in place, we are going to adorn each of these cards and kind of finish them off with a few finishing details, including some dazzling gems from Simon Says Stamp in three different colorways and glossy accents in the center of our flowers to really make the centers uh, pop and stand out. Let's place that last greeting down. Now for our dazzling gems that we're placing on each, I will be using the clear gems on the mist or teal card, the sunbeam gems on the honey background or yellow card, and the cool tones dazzling gems on our lavender lilac card. Using the glue press, I'm going to pop some little dabs of glue on my background. I've placed a few of the dazzling dazzling gems in the triangle tray and that makes it really easy to pick up exactly the ones I want with my embellishment wand and pop those in place. I feel like this finishes off the floral arrangement beautifully plus adds that fun little embellishment touch. I love that there are several different combinations of dazzling gems that you can use to perfectly match whatever project you're working on. The great thing about the triangle trays is once you are finished, you can easily funnel them back into the storage containers and these cute little round storage containers from Simon Says Stamp are just the perfect way to house your gems. My glossy accents was a little clogged, so I'm gonna grab a straight pen to unclog it and wow, it's coming out fast now. I'm trying to pick up a little bit from that one bloom center and move it to the other one. Once this dries, it will dry completely clear and raised. Let's go ahead and do that for the remaining two cards, just being careful to keep our hand out of the glossy accents. Probably should have saved that for the last step, but live and learn, and uh, we're gonna live on the edge today. Again, we're gonna use the clear gems for the blue card. These would work for all of the cards. I just was having fun playing with the different color combinations, and I really did like the sunbeam on the yellow. 
We're going to use the small and the large sizes in both and just kind of scatter these all around. Place a couple more. Looks like I missed a little bit of glue. And I really tried to copy what I did for the first card. Now, once we have all of our gems in place, we are simply going to glue each of these panels to a white top fold card base. I love the pre-cut and scored card bases from Simon Says Stamp, and our cards are all finished. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video showcasing three birthday cards created with awesome products from Simon Says Stamp, creating these tone-on-tone -tone designs. As always, the supplies I use to create these cards are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube for your convenience. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for the March 2024 edition of Making the Cut, and we'll see you again next time. Bye! I'm Heidi, Simon's Mama and founder at SimonSaysStamp.com. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you like what you just saw, be sure to press the thumbs up and subscribe to see more great content.